How does a team score? What's that old saying? What's that famous saying? Oh, you mean the one by uh, that guy who worked in a paper company? Paper company? What are you talking about? It was a uh, it was a Gretzky quote, the great one. You know, the great one, number ninety nine, best player ever. No, nope, I'm pretty sure it was uh, that guy Scott. He said, "You miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky." I don't know who Wayne Gretzky is, but apparently he never took shots. That is not, that is, you. that is so categorically wrong. What, you're ridiculous. Uh, yes, that was the quote. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. The Rangers did not get pucks on net. The entire game. The shot total, it was, it was reminiscent of last year when we ha- had trouble 5-on-5 five five scoring. Wouldn't you know it? The only goals we scored... We're on the special teams, on the PK, actually. These are not habits that we should be coming back to. I know it's a preseason game, but we need to be better. The whole team needs to be better. So jumping right back in, I was lucky enough to uh, be able to go to the game. Well, lucky is kind of a strong word. I was pumped to go to the game. They kind of didn't play for uh, for the fans there. It was a loss at home to the Devils, even in preseason. Always sucks and hurts. But I went with my friend who's a Habs fan, Canadians fan, and he I convinced him to wear my Liberty jersey that you see behind me. He begrudgingly did it. And, of course, you know, we're walking up to Madison Square Garden. We're right outside the garden, and a couple of guys with a camera walk up to us and start inter- interviewing us. And it ends up being Ice Cold Takes Podcast. Shout out them. Uh, they had a whole rig set up. It was, it was very professional. Um, so good on you, mates. But they started interviewing us. And, of course, the first thing out of my mouth, I have a couple nooners, a couple beers in me. I'm like, oh, you know, he's a Habs fan over here wearing a Rangers jersey. So they, the whole conversation turns to that, like, how dare you? How could you call yourself a Habs fan and wear the Rangers jersey? Like, what do you think of Kreider? What do you think of that hit back in the day that he accidentally ran into uh, Carey Price for? And it was just a funny back and forth. There were people, you know, New York is crazy. If you have a camera, a nice camera, and you're filming, anyone who's anyone will try to get on screen uh so we had some homeless people and some people who were maybe out of their minds uh come up and try to get in it was it was a funny uh funny little experience that we both we both had but getting into the game the game overall was really low energy not to mention low shots and i think people were saying maybe it's because the prospects or the people in the game knew that the cuts were coming and knew probably who was going to stay on the team and who wasn't. That's fair, but it's still, you know, you're still, you better put your best foot forward here and try to leave a good impression, even if you are going back to your junior team or going to go down waivers to go to the AHL. Uh, but it did, it did seem really disjointed. Um, the only line that I say that really stood out was the kid line. They were buzzing. They had possession the whole time. And, even that first line, like Kreider and Zibanejada looked like themselves, but having Blay up there, I'm not really sure if that's the move. He didn't impress. He didn't really bring something that I thought added to that line. And I and I was thinking about maybe they're just having him as a placeholder there, seeing if he can thrive. If not, they'll do some switches. They'll switch up the lineup a little bit. But that's a prime spot to be shopping for it come trade deadline season in March. So that's something to watch this season long because Sammy Blay didn't look like the guy there, unfortunately. There were a lot of penalties. It seemed like every two minutes there was another two minutes getting tacked on to either the Rangers or the Devils. And maybe that threw the team off their game, fair enough, but it just it it was a little sloppy, choppy and sloppy. Um that said, the Rangers got a power uh, penalty kill goal there um, off of a Kreider and Fox rush with Zibanejad making a nice defensive uh, play and turnover at our blue line. I think 
our special teams, again, are going to be top-notch. It's just, can we find that five-on-five -five scoring? We didn't have it last year. God knows we didn't have it in the playoffs last year. So can these guys, Kravtsov, Blay even, can the kid line produce? Can Keandre take the next step? Can Panarin take this next step that, you know, he's at the top level of game in the league, but he thinks he can do more. So if he can, I assume he will bring it to the power play sphere. He needs it when we're even strength. Oh, man, that laughy goal. Another penalty kill goal, shorthanded, but good turnover, good takeaway in our offensive zone, and one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, he does not miss. I think it was Vanacek the whole game. He did not miss. Forehand, backhand, roof. Might have been backhand, forehand, backhand, whatever. Top shelf roof. He's gonna. He's definitely breaking 20 goals this year, even strength, by far. He had the most even strength goals of any Ranger last year. So I guess to add to my previous point, Having the kid line produce, the whole team has to be better, but those guys are slated for big, even strength numbers. This game really got away from the Rangers. It wasn't, I love being at the Garden. I'll never say I would have traded that for something else, but it wasn't what I was expecting. I was hoping more high intensity, high octane uh, atmosphere, and it was a little dead, so. That's really all there is for that game. It was low energy. We had a couple shorthanded goals, and Igor let in some goals, but a lot of them were quick shots. I don't really blame him. I'm not worried about him at all. Not much else you can say there. As far as the post-game activities, we ended up going to the Canuck, which is on 22nd and 9th. Great Canadian hockey bar. Always has hockey on. Had some of the later preseason games on. Also had the football game on. Has a big moose in the middle of the bar, you can get fresh Labats off the draft or in, or in buckets and Moosehead Lager. It's it's one of the best spots. The food ain't bad either. So that's where I always tend to go when I'm on that side of town. Shout out Canuck. Love them. Okay, let's move on to game four against the Devils at the Devils. Remember what I said last game? Do you remember the quote, the theme, the main theme? Yeah, it was something about ducks, I think. Ducks in, ducks in the net? Ducks in nets? I don't know. It's, I think it's duck season. God, you didn't take your meds today, did you? Jeez. <laughs> nope. No, I did not. I'm seeing things. Okay. All right. Okay, you were close. Pucks on net. Someone listened because the entire Ranger squad were peppering Mackenzie Blackwood with shots the entire game. It was night and day from the game that I went to. And for good reason, and it played out for them. Blackwood was a wall most of the game, but after our 30th shot going into the third period, we finally broke through Panarin, first game of the preseason. Uh, he he just is an X factor. He brings such a different level to the game, and he's dangerous. You know, he's making passes that I say this. I'll, I'll continue to say it. He's making passes that I don't see, that I don't think anyone else on the ice sees, tape to tape. And there was one specific instance. He's looking. He's circling in the offensive zone, and he dumps it back hard, and it connects with our, I forget who, it might have been Heedle's tape, immediately. And I was like, how did he do that? Like, he didn't look back. He just knew exactly where Heedle was going to be, and he made the pass. It was it was unbelievable. When people say, like, yeah, he just sees things, I'm, you know, I th figure that's a figure of speech, but it's legit. Like, he, <laughs> he, he views this game so differently. It's crazy. Heedle playing with Panarin is... I, I guess back a couple years ago, the conversation around Hedl is, can he take the next step? I guess it still is. Can he take the next step? Can he be the second center? We have Trocek now, so we don't need him to be, but can he? And I think this game, if there's any indication, he definitely can be. He stuck with Panarin. He's confident. They have Kravtsov on the other wing. It just was, it looked good and it made me excited. It's just, what do you do with Trocek then? You leave him at third center? He promised him he'd get some time playing with Panarin, so we got to see how it all shakes out. 
But Heedle, I hope, is going to have a big season, and then somehow we find a way to keep him on board longer term. The cap, apparently, allegedly, is going to raise in the next few years. I heard one estimate of the 24-25 season. It could be all the way up to $92 million. So everything will adjust, I would think. Um, you know, it's not just going to be automatic, oh, look at all this space, let's just pay everyone so much more. But I think it'll... The, the implications on the league are going to be fun to follow. Yaro Halak, he went in... So Deming started the first period. He looked okay. Not a little shaky, but like realistically, he's our third goalie. And we might even give Grand a shot over him, depending. But Halak is our locked-in backup. He looked solid. He had 15 save shutout in the second half. And he was... Shutting down Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes, by the way, is a problem, to say the least. Like, I know the Rangers didn't have a choice to draft him. It was consensus Hughes, Kako, top two, and whoever the Devils chose, we would have chose the other. And I hate saying this because I love Kako. It's just like, you look at some of the stats they're putting up for Hughes. He In 49 games last year, he had 50-something goals or 50-something points. It's just... He, I don't know if he's underrated, but he, I think he's slated, if he can stay healthy, to possibly go close to 100 points, which I hate saying. I hate it. I cannot stand the Devils. I used to think they were, you know, the last 10 years, they were kind of irrelevant, maybe five years, but now they're coming back. They got Heischer. They got Heischer's hurt, but coming back. Heischer, Hughes, Palat, Hamilton. They're going to be good soon. And finally... The guy that I drool over every game he plays, Keandre Miller, gets you know a little bit of a lucky bounce, ricochet off some defenders, but he scores a goal. Doesn't matter how it gets there, as long as it gets in. So he's taking his next step. He's doing well. He's freaking. He's gonna. I, I, how many times do you want me to say it? he's gonna be elite, and he's gonna sh- shock people this year, and I can't wait. He's so. He's, he's awesome. Sometime in between these two games, the Rangers released a statement that they assigned a bunch of people down to the AHL. They put Brennan Othman back to the Flint Firebirds. Again, probably the smartest move, just cap-wise and for the team. Othman, he'll be fine. He'll hopefully dominate again, maybe get up to 60 goals this year with Flint. And, you know, their season should end around March and I think we would have the rights to bring him back over and play for the playoffs, which would be an awesome electric thing to have him come in and just tear it up come playoff season. Oh, God, I cannot wait. Oh, man. All right, and that is the recap for games three and four. The next game should be in a few days. I think it's middle of next week. So I'll be following that. I'll be following any storylines, any injuries, any drama that happens through Twitter or through the Rangers sphere, but thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want to see more, check out my other playlists on my channel, and thank you so much, everyone. Be well.